This is AutoLine Daily reporting on the global automotive industry. FCA is switching some of its executives around. Jim Morrison, who was in charge of Ram in North America, is now the head of Jeep in North America. He replaces Tim Kaniskis, who was running Jeep, but goes back to leading the company's passenger car brands in North America, in addition to being the head of Alfa Romeo globally. And Fiat is struggling in the U.S., but Tim Kaniskis told Wards that FCA is still committed to the brand. Fiat has only sold a little over 4,100 cars through May this year, which is down 40% from the year before. Kaniskis blames the drop in sales on having a range of models that basically appealed to the same customer. And he says low fuel prices is making it harder to boost sales with customers choosing pickups and crossovers instead. By the way, we talked to Tim Kaniskis about some of the changes to Dodge's lineup, and you can watch that interview right now on our YouTube channel. You know, as we keep saying, automotive suppliers are the engine of innovation in this industry, and here's a pretty cool development from Antiva. It developed a new material for instrument panels, consoles, and doors that's mostly made from scrap that would otherwise end up in landfills. They call it Intether Echo Trim and they used recycled bilaminate scrap for the base structure of the components. Even more amazing, it's cheaper than using virgin material. Specifically, it reduces waste 50% and cost by 20%. And Tiva says in a couple of years, automakers will be using 143 million kilograms of bilaminate material in cars. But using its process, none of that scrap would end up in landfills. Automakers around the world are racing to come out with electric cars, but so far, no one knows how to make a profit on them, unless they sell for about $48,000 or more. It's all about the cost of the batteries. Alex Partner says the powertrain cost for BEVs is about $16,000 per vehicle, compared to about $6,500 for ICEs. It says the cost will come down 4% a year from technical improvements and 7% thanks to economies of scale. But that means BEVs will not catch ICEs for nearly a decade. And we would also point out that a simple ICE powertrain is even cheaper. A naturally aspirated two liter with a six speed automatic probably costs a little over two grand. That makes it tough for BEVs to compete for mass market sales. Alex Partners predicts Automakers will sell 14,000 BEVs per model compared to about 90,000 per model for vehicles with internal combustion engines. General Motors, Ford, and FCA will start negotiating a new labor contract with the UAW in a couple of weeks. And one of the issues that's sure to come up is that union workers cost a lot more than non-union workers. Including benefits, the Detroit Three pay an average of $63 an hour versus $50 an hour at the transplants. Second-tier UAW workers earn about $77,000 a year. First-tier workers earn about $98,000 and skilled trade members earn $123,000 a year. That's their take-home pay, not including benefits, but it does include overtime bonuses and profit sharing. The Detroit Three know better than to ask for lower wages, but they are looking at other ways to cut labor costs, such as higher health care co-pays and using more temporary workers. Ford has a lot riding on the new Explorer. It's Ford's third best-selling model in the U.S. with sales of roughly 88,500 units so far this year. But that's down nearly 17% from a year ago. So it's a good thing Ford knocked the all-new Explorer out of the park. It passes the 100-yard test, meaning in the first 100 yards, you know how good it is. They did a great job of nailing down the basics. It feels solid. The interior is quiet. The seats are comfortable. The powertrains give you confidence. It rides nice, and it has tons of new technology. I was really drawn to the ride of the vehicle. When I say it feels solid, I mean nothing rattled around, and you can feel the heft of the vehicle through the steering. 
but it's not so much that the steering is heavy or the Explorer feels big. It actually makes you feel like you're driving a much smaller vehicle. Ford also did a great job of tuning the suspension. It's smooth over normal bumps and dips, but never once did I feel like the vehicle was top heavy. It's also amazing how good the ST version is. It's a lot of fun to tap into its 400 horsepower twin turbo V6. And for such a big vehicle, it was really surprising how the weight didn't push you around on the road and the steering feels direct. Ford also sells an ST version of the Edge, but that ST was never planned from the beginning and kind of felt like it was slapped together later. The Explorer ST certainly did not feel that way. I'd also like to briefly talk about towing because I don't tow often, but when I do tow, I tow Dos Equis. Nah, I'm just kidding. I only tow on these drive events, and of the last three vehicles I've towed with, the F-150 with the six-cylinder diesel, the Jeep Gladiator, and the Ford Explorer, all with similarly weighted trailers, the Explorer pulled the best and had the best road manners. And another thing, the new Explorer has more off-road street cred than the previous model. Not sure if it would finish the Rubicon Trail, but it is nice to know you can get out of some sticky situations, and I'm not sure how many other hybrids can say that either. The all-new Explorer will start hitting showrooms soon. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. And by DuPont. Transforming industries and improving lives through material science. When you think of Detroit automakers, GM, Ford, and FCA likely come to mind. But have you ever heard of Bordron, Quadrobot, or Bollinger Motors? They're all EV startups that have migrated to the Motor City. And on AutoLine this week, we're joined by representatives from each company. And in the following clip, Jerry Levine from Bordron, a company headquartered in China, explained why it opened up operations in Detroit. Yeah, it really comes down to the access to talent, right? I mean, the people that are here in Detroit, our typical employee has probably 15 to 20 years of experience. They've worked for a global OEM, probably also one or two global tier ones. They've launched vehicles all around the world. And then there's also the thought that you need competing, competing engineering teams, right, and design teams. There's a benefit to having a team in North America and a team in Asia because there's, you know, they can push each other, new, new ideas, better ideas, peer reviews, different experiences, and try to leverage and integrate the best of both. You can watch that entire discussion right now on Autoline.tv, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. And a programming note, Autoline Daily and Autoline After Hours will be off next week as the Autoline crew takes its annual July break. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on Monday, July 8th. Take care. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.